Mali, uh, which took place between the 16th and 22nd of December 2018 by the NATIM team and myself. Um, the team, composed of Honorable Sadiq Ibrahim Dasin, uh, the Chairman House Committee on Human Rights, Mr. Godwin Moka, Director of Research and Programs Development, NAPTEC, Mrs. Tina Ugu, Assistant Director of Investigation and Monitoring, NAPTEC, Austin Akanya, the Chief Intelligence and International Corporations Unit, Wahid Taibu Adeboiga, the Head, Joint Border Task Force, Lagos, Adetunji Adepoju, Assistant Director, Nigeria Television Authority, Mrs. Okwe Mikola Wole, Programs Officer, IOM Lagos. We had a meeting um, with the embassy officials um, detailing them of our mission to Mali. And this mission was premised on the fact that we had received a number of complaints about Nigerians who were being um, forced into sexual exploitation in Mali. And um, the numbers seem to have been increasing because a lot of them were coming back um, to Nigeria and we decided to go see things for ourselves, hence the team. Um, the team was received at the embassy by the minister consular, Mrs. Abimbola Bono Kiso, and other senior officers of the mission. The ambassador, His Excellency Mr. Ken Wachuku, was on a home visit at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and therefore Mrs. Monosiko briefed the team about the efforts of the embassy to protect Nigerian citizens in Mali and to rescue victims of trafficking. There are more than one million Nigerians residing in Mali. About 20,000 Nigerian girls are believed to be victims of trafficking in Mali, and that's just a rough estimate. The number increases by 50 per day. Reason, by the, reason being that they have a very short span to repay back their so-called debts. And when they pay back within six months, they come back and they recruit like 10 to 20 and take back with them. Many of the victims are deceived into living their livelihoods in Nigeria for greener pastures to Malaysia. They give them the impression they're going to Malaysia, so they call it Malaysia. And so some of them are even abducted. They are victims of abduction from Nigeria. We were told that some young girls actually arrived in their school uniforms on their way back from school to their homes, they were snatched off the streets and they found themselves in Mali. About 275 girls were rescued and repatriated in 2018. About 50 are waiting repatriation as at December 2018. Nigerian girls are trafficked mainly to the mining areas in the south and central parts of Mali. But a substantial number are trafficked to rebel-held areas in the north where they become radicalized. Most of the madams force the victims to sleep with numerous men without using any protection. Hence, the high incidences of sexually transmitted diseases and other ailments among the victim community. Nigerian girls are treated as slaves and less than second-class citizens by some of the Malians and law enforcement agencies. The Malian authorities collect taxes from the victims on a weekly basis and sell condoms and other medications compulsorily to the victims every month. Mali women are already grumbling that the Nigerian girls are taking their men from them and so there are fears of imminent xenophobic attacks. These are some of the homes where the Nigerian girls sleep with the men. Very tiny, um, hot-like um, accommodation. Um, we had a meeting with the embassy officials, and the key points uh, from this meeting were as follows. That three Nigerian girls were killed between November and December 2018. A notorious Nigerian woman who had 150 girls under her control was apprehended with the support of the Malian authorities and is currently serving a three-year jail term. Traffickers no longer accompany their victims to Mali, but they will build them 
from a particular motor park in Cotonou, Benin Republic, for onward transmission to Mali. On arrival at the border town between Burkina Faso and Mali, many of the girls are sold off for 350,000 CFA to 400,000. Their new owners then make them to pay back about 1.8 to 2 million CFA. The victims are usually able to pay up within six to eight months and then go into business for themselves, accounting mostly for the geometric increase in the number of victims in Mali. The border points between Nigeria and Benin Republic at Semekrake and Burkina Faso, Mali, are notoriously porous. And despite numerous reports and pictures of notorious traffickers sent to the law enforcement agencies at the borders, no arrests or rescues have been made. We had a meeting with the Nigerian community and Nigerians in diaspora, Nido, Mali. Present were Nido, the Igbo community, the Yoruba community, Hausa community, Edo Delta community, and the Crab, which comprises of Cross Rivers, Rivers, and Aquaibom and Bielsa community. The trafficking madams are well known to the Nigerian community, but they are afraid to report them because of the complicity of the Malian security agencies in human trafficking, especially the, the gendarmeries who assist the traffickers to carry out their nefarious activities. Most of the traffic tra traffickers are victims who have graduated and are now into the business on their own. Many of the victims who were rescued by NAPTIP in 2011 and 2017 came back with more victims. Nigerian victims of trafficking are way built from a motor park in Kotono, dropped at Sikasso near the border with Burkina Faso, from where they are picked by Malian gendarmerie for delivery to their madams. Many Nigerians in Mali do not have valid travel documents like the international passport or the ECOWAS passport. Rather, the Nigerian embassy has issued identity cards to Nigerian nationals for the purpose of identification since there is no passport office in the embassy. Nigerians traveling from Mali to Nigeria pay a minimum of 2,000 TFA at each of the nine border checkpoints along the route. The visit to Kangaba Prefecture. The Kangaba Prefecture is in the gold mining region of southern Mali, towards the border with Senegal and Guinea. After conferring with the prefect, the local government chairman, the judge, who is the magistrate, and the head of the gendarmerie, the team visited some of the settlements which are dotted around the gold mines. The places visited were Salamale, Kofliatie, Degedom, and Waramakil, all located deep into the bush and approachable only through dusty and uncharted tracks. The team was informed that there are at least 300 such settlements all over Mali, each holding an average of 100 to 150 Nigerian girls. The Malian authorities have little control over these settlements, which are under the control of local thugs and chieftains and local hunters. The gendarmerie collect taxes from the girls and their madams once a week through these local leaders. Some key points to note are these. The team met scores of Nigerian girls aged between 16 and above 30 years in the various settlements, including some, identi some of them identified as their madams. Life for the Nigerian sex slaves is organized around bars operated by their madams. These bars are actually nightclubs where the girls gather in the night on display for their clients. They are living huts made of black polythene stretched 
over some sticks are arranged around the bars, with each bar hosting about 50 girls or more. As follow-up to the fact-finding mission, which took place in December 2018, the Director General, Dame Julia Kadoni, visited Mali between the 3rd and 7th of March 2019, and accompanied by Mr. Godwin Moka, Director of Research and Program Development. This is the Director General. We had a meeting, discussions with His Excellency. This time around, he was present. The ambassador to Mali, Mr. Ken Wachuku, and his officials, the Nigerian community in Mali, officials of the Malian Ministry of Justice, the security services. We also visited one of the remote settlements where Nigerian girls are kept in sexual slavery, called Kokoyo, in southern Kangaba, in the southern prefecture. The Director General stated her mission was to confirm the findings of the fact-finding mission and to discuss modalities for the rescue of the victims of trafficking throughout Mali. The ambassador confirmed the findings of the fact-finding mission and stated that the number of female victims of trafficking in Mali could actually be much higher than the 20,000 estimated by the fact-finding mission. The embassy usually encounters difficulties in its endeavors to stem the trafficking of Nigerian girls to Mali due to the activities of some members of the Nigerian communities who profit from the trade, as well as some members of the Malian security agencies. He restated his commitment and that of his officials to cooperating with NAPTIC and other stakeholders to mitigate the scourge of trafficking of Nigerian girls to Mali. The officials of the Malian Ministry of Justice, as well as security agencies, assured the Director General of their cooperation with NAPTIC in order to find a solution to the embarrassing trend of the trafficking of large numbers of Nigerian girls to Mali for sexual exploitation. They requested that NAPTIC should, as a matter of urgency, develop an MOU between Mali and Nigeria in order to provide a proper framework for the rescue and return of the victims, as well as the repatriation of the suspected traffickers. At Kangaba Prefecture, the Director General had consultations with the prosecuting judge, Mr. Sekou Traore, the prefect or local government chairman, as well as the deputy commandant of the Gendarmerie, who all assured her of their total commitment and eradication of the phenomenon of the trafficking of Nigerian girls for sexual exploitation in the minefields in their provinces. During my visit to Kokoyo, my team and I were accompanied by the ambassador, Ken Wachuku, the minister counselor, Mrs. Abimbola Wonokiso, and some Nigerians living in Mali. Resolutions were made that urgent steps should be taken to sign an MOU between Nigeria and Mali, that the Nigerian embassy should provide an estimate of the logistical and other cost of identifying and rescuing between about 500 girls and their traffickers over a period of nine, eight months, that NAPTIP should ensure a comprehensive rehabilitation package for each of the victims to prevent re-trafficking. That NAPTIP should collaborate with other stakeholders, the Nigerian Embassy in Mali, IOM Mali, and Nigeria, as well as other duty-bearing agencies in Nigeria, to work out the modalities for the rescue and rehabilitation of the victims. Nigeria should urgently develop comprehensive MOUs with Mali and other countries like Burkina Faso, Benin Republic, Guinea, and Senegal. NAPTIP to collaborate with the government of the Republic of Benin to sanitize the identified motor parks in Cotonou 
where many of the victims are way built to Mali and other West African countries. To sanitize the Semekrake border in order to address the porosity through sensitization of the law enforcement agents, the Nigerian government will work through ECOWAS to collaborate with relevant national authorities to address extortion of Nigerians in transit traveling with valid travel documents. The Nigerian Embassy in Mali to issue a letter of authority to all Nigerians resident in Mali with valid identity cards to travel to Nigeria. Such Nigerians are to return to Mali with the ECOWAS or international passports. Comprehensive sensitization of rescued victims of human trafficking before repatriation, repatriation and exchange of information between the Nigerian Embassy and NAPTIP to address the needs of the victims prior to their arrival in Nigeria. IOM Mali, IOM Nigeria, Nigerian Embassy in Mali and NAPTIP to work out a comprehensive blueprint on family tracing, empowerment and rehabilitation of victims and for the rescue and rehabilitation of the victims. Nigerian Embassy in Mali to intensify efforts to have a database of Nigerians resident in Mali to avoid double or fake registration and for ease of monitoring. Nigerian Embassy in Mali to work closely with the Nigerian community leaders, the Malian authorities to identify and rescue thousands of Nigerian girls trapped in sex slavery in Mali and to identify and arrest the traffickers. NAPTIP to give technical support to Mali in their quest to establish a dedicated anti-human trafficking agency on request. Prayers to the ECOWAS parliament. Measures for better enforcement of the ECOWAS protocol of free movement, residence and establishment of West African citizens to ensure that community citizens carry requisite travel documents before crossing the borders of their own countries. Better protection of community citizens by security agents at the borders. Non-discrimination against community citizens in other countries within the community. Proper identification and protection of victims of trafficking by host nations within the community. Making laws to remove barriers against intelligence sharing, joint investigations, and mutual legal assistance, including the repatriation of victims and suspected traffickers to their countries of origin for trial. Mandating continuous sensitization of communities and law enforcement agents at the borders on transnational organized crimes, especially human trafficking. I want to thank you once more for the privilege to address this eminent parliament. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.